Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining today's presentation. My name is Renee Wells. I'm the Vice President of Product Strategy here at Rumini Street. I've been with Rumini Street for almost six years, and I have over 25 years in technology. Today, we are going to be talking about investing in innovation and transformation and how to prioritize your investments in a world of a complex manufacturing environment. Manufacturers around the globe are optimistic as they adopt industrial 4.0 transformations. Part of the transformation includes many organizations shifting manufacturing into Southeast Asia. As this shift occurs, it's imperative for manufacturers to prioritize investments and reduce technology costs to achieve operational efficiencies and all while remaining competitive. The challenge, however, is to determine which investments are necessary and which are just nice to have. In this presentation, we'll discuss some best practices in prioritizing transformational investments and demonstrate how enterprise software independent third party support can help free up those necessary resources to make the technology investments for the future. Before we get started with our discussion, I wanted to let everyone know a little bit about Rumini Street. Today, Rumini Street is widely recognized by industry analysts and clients as the global leader in third-party enterprise software support services. We are a public company. We're traded on the NASDAQ exchange. We have over 1,500 employees and operations all over the globe, including operations in Southeast Asia. Since inception, more than 4,400 organizations from a broad range of industries have selected Remini Street as their trusted partner in software support and management services. Remini Street has saved our clients nearly $5 billion to date. Most of our clients are large to very large publicly traded companies and government organizations. Our average client satisfaction rate is 4.9 out of 5.0, where 5.0 is excellent. The exciting news is that we continue to expand our support and services for software product lines like Oracle, SAP, Microsoft, IBM, Salesforce, and now open source databases. As a CIO or IT director, you have a project list and you have a wish list. You know exactly what you need to go do. You know the technologies that could impact your business the most. Those technologies that can enable endless opportunities and transform your business. You are, or at least we're ready, to go make it happen. Whether it's artificial intelligence and machine learning, embedded technologies in your products, hybrid IT and investments in cloud platforms, including open source technologies, business intelligence and analytics that could provide you the data in the format your business needs, or technologies that can enable new digital business models. The majority of you want to deliver on your business needs. It's your top priority but the vast majority of you are unable to do so. And the question is why? The answer is because you are spending your time, your money, and your resources maintaining the status quo and unable to deliver on those business projects and the innovation that's needed. So the answer to the question that I asked prior is the budget. The manufacturing industry has experienced extraordinary volatility and disruptions over the past several years. And unfortunately, those continue to occur today. One of the biggest problems facing organizations other than supply chain disruptions are the IT budgets. The IT budgets are continually competing against conflicting priorities. IT continues to be a constrained resource and no matter what industry you are in, demand always exceeds capacity. 
Even the most successful organizations have to make decisions about their ongoing spend and their limited resources. Last year, we conducted a survey of 317 CFOs and financial leaders, where 62% of the respondents stated that they were planning to cut organizational budgets. It's not surprising that most organizations across the globe are pressured to find significant cost savings and IT budgets are at the top of the list to find those reductions. Fact is, CIOs and their teams are typically the ones that help to identify, support, and even maintain the technologies that I highlighted in the prior slide. And in many cases, CIOs and their teams are the ones leading these ah, digital okay, transformation no. projects. As leaders in your organization, you know that maintaining yeah. the status quo is simply not an option. If you look at the model that I'm showing here, while it talks about budgets, it really refers to the constraints of an organization in three key resource areas, money, people, and time. Today, about 90% of these resources are spent keeping the lights on, just running the business. And that's simply too much. It leaves 10%, only 10% of the budget for business transformation. To allocate investments into new technologies and innovations that support competitive advantage and growth. This budget model shown here is no longer sustainable. So something must change. This very clear situation requires companies to make decisions and Ramini Street Services has helped organizations and many of those in the manufacturing industry move their budgets to a more sustainable model by increasing the amount of time, money and resources so they can focus on business transformation and technologies that can impact their businesses. Digital transformation is not just on the top of the mind for CIOs, but also financial leaders. Financial leaders are an integral part of the dream team across an organization. Financial leaders hold the purse strings. The question is, how are successful financial leaders prioritizing IT investments and partnering with their CIOs to drive efficiencies and growth? Here we are looking at some of the findings from a recent global survey that we conducted as an independent research in support with Rumini Street of over 1500 CFOs and other financial leaders. So you can walk away with some benchmarks and best practices from your peers on how they are prioritizing IT investments. The survey was across 13 countries, including UK, Germany, France, Poland, US, Australia, and many more. Responses were included from both the public and private sector organizations in a variety of industries, including financial services, technology, manufacturing, retail, and energy and utilities. The research also covered various size of organizations with the lower end of 200 million However, the majority of the respondents were $500 million organizations, US dollars and above in revenue. This conversation of CFO and CIOs working together is not a new topic, but what is different is the pace of change. Where the CFO has moved from a quarterly cycle to real-time updates, the same time the CIO has moved expectations to return on investment of applications to months versus years, which alters the cadence of the conversation and the collaboration that needs to take place. There were really four major findings in this survey. CFOs are bullish about digital transformation. CFOs see a clear business value and ROI from optimizing existing technology investments. In other words, maximizing and extending the life and value of what you have in place today. CFOs now expect a shorter return on investment for their technology investments. And the most important, a strong CFO and CIO partnership 
is critical to success, especially as we come out of this crisis. Looking at the current slide, these are some findings from the survey. The first is digital transformation investments are a top driver of increased technology spending. 80% of those global respondents stated that digital transformation is a top five corporate priority. And over 71% believe it is key to their success. It is not just about cutting costs or cost optimization. It is about where you are investing those funds to advance your priorities. 95% state that investing in the right technology is going to be key to recovering. This is not just technology for technology's sake, although I think many organizations got into that situation as they were under fire to put technology in place for remote access and collaboration efforts. Many of them are now having to reconcile some of those technologies that were put in place in haste. Finally, 73% of global respondents stated that the COVID situation has absolutely accelerated their digital transformation. It is being prioritized, which means there are other projects that are not being prioritized. Interesting enough, if you look at the data, the statistic was higher in certain organizations across the globe. This shows that organizations are investing with a focus to put a lead on their competition and to be in good positions as things turn back to some sense of normal. So let's dive deep into some of where some of these huge savings potentials can be found. This slide illustrates the savings that can be achieved on overall support costs by switching from expensive vendor support to Romini Street support and services. This total maintenance savings model has been validated by Nucleus Research based on over 70 detailed Romini Street client ROI studies. Our price is simply 50% of your vendor annual support fee, but that's just the tip of the iceberg in total cost savings. When you add up all of these savings categories, an organization spending a total of $4 million annually could save $3 million per year on total cost with their current vendor versus Romani Street. Let's dig deep deeper and go through each layer of the savings of the iceberg. First is forced upgrades or updates. The rule of thumb is that you will do one major ERP upgrade every five years. And that upgrade or continual updates will cost double your annual maintenance fee. In this example, your maintenance fee is $2 million per year, so your upgrade cost will be $4 million. If you divide $4 million by five years, you will save an average of $800,000 per year in annual upgrade cost. With ERP software vendors forcing their customers to new cloud platforms, the question you have is the ROI for the maintenance and support fees that you're currently paying. Now let's look at custom code. Vendor maintenance does not include support for custom code issues, requiring you to delegate full-time employees or consultants to maintain your custom code adding another potential 800,000 in annual support cost. At Romini Street, two thirds or 66% of the 30,000 cases that we resolve each year are related to custom code, interfaces, integrations, performance tuning, and even how-to questions. All of these are, are all of these covered by your existing support and maintenance contracts. There are two main issues that could cause software to break. One, you change the code. Or two, you change the data. So the software sees a condition that's never been tested before and it breaks. Vendor software maintenance becomes quickly less applicable if it doesn't uncover the issues that break. The next layer is self-support. This next area is self-support 
It is a burden on your maintenance resources, and it is probably the most misunderstood area below the waterline that drives CIOs and IT resources crazy. This problem starts with the way the vendor delivers fixes and support packs or enhancement packs or bundles. You have to review, assess, regression test, and manage hundreds of fixes when you just needed that one patch that might fix your problem. The burden is now on your team to make sure that that bundle doesn't create a ripple effect and cause even more business disruption and wasted cycles. Ramini Street gives you the fix you need on the release of the software you are running today and further test that fix in your test and development environments to make sure it works. When you add all of this up, the total is more like $4 million in cost per year. You might think that you're only spending $2 million, but you're really doubling that. At Remini Street, we cut your annual maintenance cost in half and that you are initially spending with your current vendor. And further, all of these costs that are below the waterline go away. On average, you end up saving 75% of your total support cost compared to the vendor's support model. And since you can remain on your current release for at least 15 years, you do not have to upgrade if you don't show an ROI to do so. You also save on internal resources and the time it takes in fixing problems since we support all of your custom code. With the savings, you can invest in more innovative and agile solutions that can drive competitive advantage and growth. That may include, especially for manufacturers, artificial intelligence, internet of things, hybrid IT, business intelligence and analytics, and digital technologies, or even other new projects that support your unique business objectives. Our clients in the manufacturing industries are not only getting superior support and services, but they are shifting their time, money, and resources. We have helped organizations save over $5 billion to date across all of our clients. Highlighted here are just some of these innovations, new business models, that our manufacturing clients have driven across our organizations. I want to thank you again for joining today's presentation and allowing me to share our perspectives on ways to transform your IT spend from costly ongoing operations to driving high impact business outcomes. We do have a few of our local team members on the call that can answer any questions you might have. In addition, Please follow us on Twitter or LinkedIn or visit us at RaminiStreet.com to learn more about Rumini Street and how our clients are leveraging independent software support services to significantly reduce their annual vendor maintenance costs and free up critical funds that drive business innovation.